CSS Houdini is the next big thing to happen to CSS and is going to change CSS more than Grid and Flexbox combined together. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're going to talk about CSS Houdini, which is something I'm incredibly excited for. Now there's this website called ishoudiniReadyYet.com. I'll link it in the description for you. And this essentially shows you the status of all the Houdini features in all of the different browsers. And as you can see, for the most part, these first three properties are available in all of the Chromium based browsers. So like Chrome, Edge, and so on. And Firefox is you know, under consideration for implementing these. So hopefully it's coming soon. And in Safari, some of these are available behind like feature flags and some have like partial support, but it's really not there. For the most part, these are only really available in the Chromium based browsers. And then as you get to the bottom four things on this list, they're really not available anywhere yet, but hopefully they're going to be coming soon. The nice thing about Houdini though is by far the two things that are the best and most important are the paint API and this properties and values API. And these are the things that are already implemented in the browsers like in the Chromium based browsers and coming soon in Firefox and Safari. So it's something that we can already start working with and playing around with and then hopefully soon it'll be available in all of the browsers. So in this video, I kind of want to do a quick primer on all these different topics that are in Houdini so you kind of know what to expect and why it's going to be such a game changer. Now the first one I want to talk about is the Paint API. So if we just go over to this tab here, we have a really simple example of the Paint API in action. And as you can see here, it's polyfilling the border color property in CSS. So there's a new property coming in CSS that allows you to change the color on all the border to have a bunch of different colors instead of just one color, as you can see by this border here. But that's not currently available in any browsers on CSS. So with the Paint API, what you can do is you can actually create your own polyfill for CSS to add in support for this border color property before it actually becomes part of the browser. This is huge because JavaScript already natively allows you to polyfill itself so you can add in new features with like Babel and use them ahead of time. But with CSS, you couldn't do that ever. But now with the Paint API, you're able to polyfill all these future CSS technologies. So when something like Houdini 2.0 comes out and it's a new amazing feature, or like when Flexbox is coming out again in the future, you can polyfill that and start using it immediately, even if none of the browsers at all support it. And the way this works, if we go over to this example here, is all you do is you just say, hey, you know, paint, and then you paste in the thing that you want to paint, which in our case is this checkerboard property. So we have this checkerboard being defined. It's like our own custom paint property. And we're just saying, hey, paint the checkerboard as the background image on our text area. If we scroll down, you can see it gives us this checkerboard image right here. And also you'll notice in a script, we're just registering a paint worklet and adding a modular called checkerboard.js. And this modular here is something you can download from like NPM. So you could download the polyfill for this checkerboard, you know, from NPM. And then you could just add that modular in your JavaScript like this. Now, the way you write this JavaScript is a little bit confusing. I'm going to kind of glance over it real quickly, but essentially you just create a class that has this paint function. And this paint function takes a bunch of different properties, but the main one is this context right here. So if you're kind of familiar with how you use canvas inside of HTML, this works almost exactly the same as canvas. So essentially you write your own custom canvas in all of this code here, register that as a paint worklet, giving it the name checkerboard in our example. And then in the CSS, you just use that as a paint worklet right here. And now all this JavaScript code you've written is going to run inside of CSS and it's going to run as part of CSS, which is going to be more performant than just writing your own JavaScript code to do this. And all the people across the world can use this because you can deploy this to NPM and then they can download this paint worklet right here. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be this properties and values API. And this is something I'm really excited for because it's something I've wanted to do forever and never thought was going to be possible. If you come over here, we just have a really simple code pen. I have a button that has a transform of 20 degrees being rotated and a scale that's set by this scale variable. And down here, I have an animation that's running at 0%, the scale is two, and at 100%, the scale is three. And this animation is just running every 500 milliseconds and it's going forever. But you'll notice the button actually doesn't animate. It's just jumping between these two different frames of scale of three and scale of two. And the reason for that is that custom properties in CSS cannot be animated. They don't know how to animate because it doesn't know, is this a number? Is it a string? Is it a color? I don't know what this is. With this properties and values API, you can actually define your property inside of CSS. We scroll up here and I uncomment this code right here. You're going to notice our animation is going to start working. As you can see, it's now animating properly. That's because I've defined this property called scale. And I've told CSS, this is a number. And this number has some other properties like it doesn't inherit and the initial value is one. But the important thing about this is I've defined this as a number. So now CSS knows to animate this, it's going to be a number. So I go from the number two to the number three. 
And the really cool thing about this is you can define any custom property that you want and use it anywhere inside of your CSS. So for example, like you can define a new background property if you wanted, and you can say, hey, it's going to have this syntax, it's going to inherit, it's gonna have initial value. These are all the things that you can do with just a standard CSS property, like all CSS properties have an inherit initial value and a syntax. And now you can create your own CSS properties, which allow you to do things like animating them, which you could not do before. And also, if we come over here, you can see that you can also define these in JavaScript. So you can say window.css.register property, give it a name, and then also the syntax inherits an initial value. So you can define either in JavaScript or in CSS. Generally, I think the CSS specification is probably more powerful, but you can do it in either. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about the Paint API, if we scroll down here just a little bit more, you can see you can also pass custom properties to your Paint API. So we can set the checkerboard spacing and size. And down here, we have this input properties method right here, which allows us to say what properties we're going to be getting from our CSS, and we can use those values to actually change the size and spacing. If I just play this video down here, you can see in the side they're changing their spacing, and as you can see, this checkerboard is getting more spaced out. And also, if they change the sizing, the actual checkerboard itself is going to be getting larger. So as they change this size variable here, you can see the checkerboard itself is increasing in size. Super powerful, something that you can do with custom properties, whether they're defined using this property or if they're just defined as a normal custom property like this. Now those right there are my two favorite parts of the CSS Houdini spec, but there's a few other things that are cool. This typed OM is also really nice when you're working with JavaScript. If we come over here, you can see that normally when you're dealing with JavaScript, you say like element.style.opacity and so on, and everything gets returned to you as a string. But with this type OM, what it's doing is it's saying, hey, you know what? CSS has types. We have colors, we have pixels, we have rems, we have numbers, and so on. And we're going to try to implement all of those types into JavaScript. So now you can say attribute style map. And this is going to return to you essentially that style object that you're used to, but instead of just you know getting strings, you're able to get actual values. For example, I can set the margin top to 10 pixels by saying css.pixel and passing the number 10. You know, I could do the same thing with strings like this, but the nice thing about this is it's very type safe. It's so much easier to use with types, and also it's so much easier to use when you need to like increment a value. For example, I need to take this pixel value of 10, I need to get it so I can say, hey, get me the margin top, give me the value, and it's going to return 10 itself. So I can add one pixel to this much easier than if I was using, you know, just a string because I'd have to chop off this PX part, add one and then add the PX back. But with this, I can just say, get me the value. There we go. Give me the unit, it's pixels and so on. Same thing with like keywords. You can say, hey, new keyword of initial. This is super useful. If I scroll all the way up to the top here, we can kind of see what it's talking about here by saying, hey, you know what? Get the padding or set the padding to this or get the padding. And the nice thing is you can you know, console log that value in that unit. And down here, you can say, you know what? If we just normally got element.style.opacity right here, it's going to return a string. But with this new rule, if we scroll down a little bit and we say dot get opacity and get the value, it's going to be a number. So again, that's super useful that we can actually get these things in the correct types and we can actually say, hey, is this a pixel value? Is this a rem? Is it a string? Is it a number? This is going to be really useful for writing JavaScript that interacts with CSS, but probably something you're not gonna use all the time. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the layout API, which of all the features that are not implemented yet is by far the coolest, because this essentially allows us to like implement Flexbox or Grid before they even become a thing. So if we just come over here and we just click on this tab, you can see that in order to use this, it's very similar to the Paint API. You just add a new module and that new module has a name, for example, this layout script right here, and then we can define that script down below. So to do that, we just call this register layout and we pass it a name, in our case centering, and it's going to be a class that has this layout function. This layout function takes a bunch of different properties and there's a lot of code inside of it. Essentially, all this code does is it determines how do you want to lay out all the children inside of this container. So if you wanted to create like a masonry layout, you could create a masonry layout, even though CSS doesn't have one natively built in. And if we scroll down a little ways, we can actually see how we use this in the CSS. It's super simple. We just call layout and pass it the name of the thing we want to use. This is the exact same way the paint API works. You call paint and pass it the thing you want to paint. But this is for laying out children inside of an element. So like implementing things like display flex or display grid before they were supported in the browser. So like subgrid, for example, you could implement that using this layout API before subgrid even is a thing inside of CSS. Now the last thing that has got partial support is going to be this animation worklet. And the animation worklet is cool because it allows you to write performant animations inside of JavaScript. So we took a look at a quick example here. You can see this is JavaScript code and we're creating a new animation with some keyframes and you notice something interesting. This code right here looks very similar to how you would write a CSS animation inside of CSS. You know, you have your different sections and your different keyframes and you specify all your different CSS properties just like you would do inside of the keyframes and the animation. You have your selector, which is like your, you know, CSS selector right here. And then we have things like delay, duration, and iterations. 
But the really nice thing about this is you can go much further since you have JavaScript and you can write all of the animation code in JavaScript. So you can do a bunch of other stuff inside of here and that is going to allow more powerful animations to be written, but you still get the same performance as if you wrote those natively in CSS. So while this is probably not something you're ever going to directly work with, if you use a library like GSAP, for example, to do animations in JavaScript, it may implement all of those behind the scenes using this animation workload here. And when Houdini rolls this out, now your animations with GSAP are gonna be more performant because they can actually natively use CSS by using this new animation class. Now the last two sections I want to cover are going to be the parser API and the font metrics API. And these are things that really don't have much support. As you can see, they're not supported anywhere and they're only in like the proposal stages. If I just move my camera, you can see they're in the proposal stages here for the actual W3 spec. So they really aren't that well defined, but essentially what these allow you to do is kind of get more nitty gritty inside of parsing out CSS. It's really something you'll probably never use, but it's really good for like libraries under the hood. So the parser API just makes it easier to parse CSS from a style sheet within JavaScript, kind of similar to how this typed OM is doing it, but it goes even a step further for like extra parsing that you need to do. And font metrics API is kind of similar in that it allows you to really get into the nitty gritty details of how your actual font is defined. So like things like overhang where like the Y overhangs below the line and like capital letters go above the top of the line. This font metrics just makes it a little bit easier to work with that stuff inside of JavaScript. But again, these two things are probably something you're never going to actually work with as a developer. And instead you're just gonna use libraries that end up using this information for you. Now I know we covered a lot about CSS Houdini, but I highly recommend going to that ishoudiniReadyyet.com site, checking out some of these articles and reading more about that so you can really kind of deep dive into it because this is something that is absolutely amazing and going to change CSS forever. And speaking of CSS, if you wanna see some of my other CSS videos, they're gonna be linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.